What's going on guys, this is Rob. Uh, if you guys enjoy my content, make sure you hit the subscribe button and make sure you hit that little bell so you never miss out on my sexy voice. Okay, so we are continuing the Batman Who Laughs miniseries, and uh, yeah, dude, okay, I'm, I'll am i be honest, man, like, like it's like the same thing I said in the first in the first issue, like, this is so cool, and Jock is the one who, okay, so Jock's the one doing the art. Those of you guys who don't know, I'm pretty sure Jock was the one who did the art for uh, Witches, and if you guys never read Scott Snyder's Witches, you are seriously missing out. Dude, Scott Snyder's Witches is ridiculously good. I can't wait to get into Witches 2, but uh, it's 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 pretty wild. Anyway, so, uh, so one of the things to pick up on here, and, and kind of rehash, because it's been a little while, been a few weeks since we did the first First one and we do have some catching up to do uh because i mean it is january so it's a time of year when we just kind of lay back and just do like three videos a week or something like that then we start picking things back up again so once we, once we get into like february and march with this whole idea of the batman who laughs the batman who laughs was like the most popular character to come out of dark knight's metal right like i think we can all agree on that but the batman who laughs was just resoundingly popular because it was the answer to the question what would happen if batman became the joker and the idea behind this is that the batman who laughs had always just kind of been in the background following dark knight's metal he was never actually defeated and it wasn't really until recently until this mini series that we actually have him doing things he was kind of in the beginning of, of immortal man a little bit but he was more in the beginning of immortal man for the purpose of like drawing in readership than actually doing anything worthwhile but the long and short of what we've seen so far just in the first uh, really the first and second issue so far is that the batman who laughs has a plan we just don't know exactly what it is but remember the entire basis behind how the batman who laughs became what he was was when the joker had essentially been killed and then released a kind of joker toxin that infected bruce wayne and turned him into the joker which turned him into the batman who laughs and so the idea is that when joker kind of appears to bruce wayne at the end of the first issue and then offs himself then it's essentially like okay the joker's like you're the only one who can defeat the batman who laughs you have to become me in order to beat him and then joker basically tries to off himself in an effort to like spread the toxin out the difference here is that it doesn't happen right off the bat because of the fact that that bruce wayne is aware of who the batman who laughs is and the origin story of his character he's trying to like stem the flow and so what's basically going on here is bruce is kind of transforming but trying to keep it at bay while at the same time the joker's being worked on if the joker dies then that's when the toxin really gets released and there's no coming back but in this instance what bruce wayne has been doing is literally pumping himself with every kind of joker toxin they have but that's one of the important things to bear in mind here is that the toxin within the joker's heart is so potent that it can't really be stopped all the other versions of the joker toxin that exist out there those have antidotes right like that's what bruce wayne's been using over the years is using those antidotes to those versions of the joker toxin synthesizing an antidote if the if the toxin is new and then using it to cure people this is a perfect strain it's it's a perfect and pure strain and so there is no antidote for it there's no conceivable way to overcome it and so the best that bruce can do is stave it off and so while that's happening what he's trying to do here is understand what the batman who laughs is trying to do and so in the midst of all this while all that's going on what we end up having is some guy who's driving and suddenly like a version of bruce wayne lands on top of his car now this brings in commissioner gordon and it brings in what appears to be harvey bullock now with commissioner gordon he's kind of working on the other half of this case the first part of the case kind of the front side is the Batman who laughs his back what's his plan the backside is all these different versions of Bruce Wayne from what are basically what seem to be like the dark multiverse are popping up now that's kind of the the caveat here is initially it seemed to be dark multiverse versions of Bruce Wayne this does not appear to be true instead what it seems to be are versions of Bruce from across the multiverse not versions of Bruce Wayne from the dark multiverse and the reason why is because with that multiverse itself it was basically full of what like like worst case scenarios what if Superman became a bad guy and killed everybody on earth what if Batman became the Joker and then became an evil version of Batman. Like, that's the kind of thing you see in the Dark Multiverse. This version of Bruce, like the other version who had died and the other versions that have appeared off panel that have been discovered by Commissioner Gordon are good versions of Bruce. This one in particular was actually mayor of Gotham City. The problem with this is that while all that happens, one of the rookies basically walks up to, to Harvey Bullock, starts talking to him, and Harvey Bullock starts freaking out. And that's when we end up learning this is actually Bruce Wayne with the Joker toxin. And that's what's so crazy about this is Bruce is walking a knife's edge right now. At any moment, he could fall over. He could literally flip over the other side and become the joker he's doing the best he can to, to kind of hold it together but there's a limit to all this the other half and this is this is one of the cool things about scott snyder writing is bruce reveals something that we didn't really know before and so one of the things he does here is he draws what's basically called the last laugh and the idea was that if gotham city were ever attacked which is to say if it was like a chemical weapon or if there was some kind of toxin that was released across the city or whatever it is but the city itself just sort of fell into absolute madness that there were all these tunnels that have been designed over the years that would basically allow for for fast travel of like food and 
and supplies and means by which the city could essentially be fixed. But what Bruce Wayne has been working on is his own version of Last Laugh. Because of the fact that the Joker toxin is so, so powerful and presumably coming out of the events of Batman Endgame, one of the things that Bruce Wayne devised is that there had to be a means by which the city could be cured. He could literally pump an antidote into the entire city itself and cure everyone. And so by working on that, one of the things he says is that this is a, a system by which Gotham can be saved, but it's also a system by which Gotham can be destroyed. And the initial response of Commissioner Gordon is, well, then what's the huge concern here? And the response of Bruce Wayne is to say that you can only access it using DNA. And that's when we pick up with the Batman who laughs. And that's what's so great about this is because the Batman who laughs is an evil version of Bruce. He essentially had all the same experiences as Bruce Wayne up until the point when the Joker died and he was hit with the toxin and then went crazy. And so because he thinks, he feels, he functions in the exact same way as Bruce Wayne in the main DC universe, he would do the exact same things Bruce would, which means he's he's aware of the exact same things Bruce is. And so that's when really Snyder kind of tells us indirectly that all these things that Bruce Wayne's doing in the main DC universe, the Batman who laughs did in his universe. And so with that happening, with that in mind, Batman who laughs shows up at Wayne Manor, which is the only access point to this last laugh uh, tunnel that Bruce Wayne's been building, and then in turn basically begins to access it. Now, the only real guardian here is a guy named Bill. And the initial inclination is like, how does Bill not know this is Bruce Wayne? Only for us to find out that Bill's blind. And so it's kind of a cool thing because what this would do is it would actually allow Bruce Wayne to access this aspect of Wayne Tower and for Bill to never really know Bruce Wayne's face, or at least to never really know that it was actually him. Now, the fact that Bill refers to him as Mr. Wayne indicates that Bill knows exactly who Bruce Wayne is and the Batman who last makes his way in there. And when he does, we see an aspect of his character we don't normally see. When it comes to this version of Bruce and when we saw him in Dark Knight's Metal, he was really more of like the second in command. He was a guy who was running alongside Barbados. But when you throw him into the story, what it does is it shows he's just as, as capable as we would expect. It's all the formidable, uh, formidable abilities of Bruce Wayne combined with the insanity of the Joker, which basically makes for him going through and killing every single member of Wayne's security inside this section of Wayne Tower with no limits whatsoever. One of the other cool things here, and to really kind of underscore the fact that he and Bruce think so much alike, is that once all these guys are dead, he counts down and three, two, one, bam, enters Batman. And that's kind of the cool thing here is because what it means and what it really shows here is that Bruce Wayne fighting this evil version of himself that it really seems to be an even match. And in fact, as this fight unfolds, Bruce comments on it proper that he says, well, I'm, I'm stronger, but I'm not faster. And so because of the fact that he's able to fight so capably, what this means is he can overcome me because of the fact that he knows exactly how I function. He knows the weaknesses. He knows what kind of weapons he needs in order to overcome my various suits of armor and the kind of defense mechanisms that I employ. And it's kind of a funny thing here because Bruce gets the upper hand Hand on the Batman who laughs. And when Bruce kind of basically says like your whole plan stops here, the response of Batman who laughs is what makes you think this is not part of my plan. And that's the cool, that, that's what I love so much about his character. It, it, Scott Snyder writes them in such a way that you have to assume everything that happens, happens according to the will of the Batman who laughs. That if he's defeated, it's because he wanted to be defeated because he wanted to be taken to a particular location. And he knew he would be taken to that location if he was defeated because he knows how Batman works. And so you have to assume that he knows everything that's going to happen or at the very least has planned it all out ahead of time. And this all really comes to a head when Bruce Wayne is shot. And this is cool because what Batman Who Laughs does is he says, there's basically this guy out there, this version of Bruce Wayne who's out there, he's called the Grim Knight. He's basically Batman as the Punisher. That this version of Bruce Wayne is far more extreme. And the way he came into existence was by virtue of the fact that when Joe Chill shot Thomas and Martha, Bruce Wayne picked up a gun and shot Joe Chill. The implication seems to be that Joe Chill shot Thomas and Martha and then dropped the gun out of perhaps panic or fear, or whatever the case was, and ran. And in that moment, Bruce Wayne picked the gun up and shot Joe Chill. And that set him on the path of killing every criminal he finds. And so what Batman Who Last does is kind of reveal everything to Bruce and say, you built this entire place in order to ensure that Gotham could be saved in the event of an emergency by pumping out some antidote. I'm going to use this as a means to destroy the city. And the response of Bruce is, well, you can't do that because the building can only really be used in that regard if it's empty. And the response of Batman Who Last is, I know. And all these safeguards that you have in place have all been dismantled by the Grim Knight. He's done it all over the over the last couple days. So I'm going to destroy this building and I'm going to destroy your ability to basically save the city of Gotham. In this moment, there's nothing that can be done. There's nothing Bruce Wayne can do. The best he can do is escape. He grabs Bill. He uses one of those little grappling hooks. They escape the, they escape Wayne Tower and the entire building comes crashing down around them. And so what this means is the means by which Gotham can be saved based on whatever plan the Batman who laughs has is gone. There's no real way to believe that it can be done in any real measure of time because you have to assume that whatever plan it is, the 
Batman Who Laughs has, whatever plan he has uh, has based is going to be predicated on what Bruce Wayne would most likely do. So again, overcoming the odds by knowing how his enemy functions. And so with Bruce Wayne returning back to, uh, to Wayne Manor and running up to Alfred, it's wake the Joker up. You have to wake him up. Now, what we end up realizing here is Joker's been awake the entire time. He's been listening to the discussions of Bruce and Alfred and where he's been kind of laughing and they've been assuming it's a reaction. In reality, he's laughing at the futility of their choices. He's laughing at the futility of their efforts to try to stop the Batman who laughs because the response of, uh, you know, really with Bruce here, the idea is you have to know the answer. You have to know what it is that the Batman who laughs wants. He's basically you from an alternate reality. Only you really seem to be the one that knows how his mind works. Tell me what he's going to do. And the response of the Joker is, I don't know what he's going to do. There's only one person out there in the entire world who knows exactly what it is that Batman who laughs is going to do. And that person is none other than James Gordon Jr., the son of Commissioner Gordon and the guy who's basically nuts. With that being said, guys, <laughs> we're going to bring this video to an end. If you are new here to Comics Explain, make sure you guys hit the sub button to become part of the Rob Corps. If you guys enjoy this video, make sure you drop a like. And yeah, I'm leaving you on a cliffhanger. I will explain James Gordon Jr. in the next video. I will catch you all later. Peace. <laughs>